All right, so it's about this time of year where I experience the, the most pain. So here's some of my top tips and tricks to help you reduce your pain without having to take drugs. doing right now is oh son of a gun I need to do this more often yeah I just went to Target it's a little block um, I placed it um, just on my lower back you just gotta find what stretches work for you if you can get on the floor like I can get on the floor right here and stretch it's flat it's solid and you can kind of twist and turn whichever way uh, if you have a hard time getting on the floor you can jump on the bed and I'm gonna show you how to do that in this next shot but I like the ground because it's hard beds tend to be softer can't really get as much of a stretch. How's my face? Does it look like I'm in pain right now? Because this is not pleasant. Uh, but what's even more unpleasant is being tight. You know, you can look up yoga poses, you can look up stretches. You Let's pick some apples. Join me. Let's reach up. Pick our apple as if you were pulling it off the tree and bring it down and put it in the bucket. You can figure out what's best for you. My back is different than your back. My injuries are different than your injuries, but stretching is really important. Keeps the muscles loose, keeps the blood flowing. All right, so this is my next favorite pose to do. Um, I like doing this because I can like dig my knees into the soft bed and my feet can hang over the edge, but this really like stretches out uh, my lats and my low back. Reach out in front of me as far as I can go while pressing my butt down. You can also move your hands over like this. Get over here, do the same thing as well. All right, so this one I like to do, I like to put my leg out like this and just twist into it. The reason I like doing that is because it stretches out the side of the leg and puts a nice crank yeah! on the low back. When I first got hurt, I had uh, family members help me with stretching. You know, I'd like lay on my back and, and they would help me bring my knees forward and back out again and forward and back out again. You also, if you sit in a chair all day, your hip flexors get really tight. So it's really important to lay on your belly. If you can push yourself up like this, that really stretches that out. This is what I like to do. This is just for me because my, where my hardware is, it lands right there and I just kind of like press into it really. So I personally don't use any narcotics. I don't use any painkillers that are opiate based. If you want to know more about why I don't use that, please sign up to my email list. I've got a whole uh, lot of information and story in there about why I don't use narcotics. The number one thing I like to keep in my system all day, I take this three times a day, is, is this right here. It's a turmeric curcumin. So what this is is an anti-inflammatory. It's a natural supplement that really takes away inflammation and pain. I'm a huge fan of this. It's made with minimal ingredients. You can take a bunch of it. It's not gonna be bad on your liver or your body. And I've found this really helps. The only uh, tricky part is you have to keep it in your system for it to work. So you have to take it regularly for it to stay in your system. Uh, the next go-to is extra strength Tylenol, which is N-acetaminophen and ibuprofen. These I don't use frequently because if you take too much of them, you will mess up your liver long-term. These are not the best for your stomach, but they do help in a pinch. Um, I know I've got friends and family and even my girlfriend, they carry these with them to, to help me out if I'm ever in a situation where I'm like, oh crap, I messed up. Now we're gonna talk about some of the prescription medications I take. I only take two. Um, one of them I take regularly. This is Lyrica. Lyrica is basically gabapentin, AKA Neurontin's uh, bigger, badder, older brother. The only challenge with this one is it's really expensive, but it works really well. Um, if you can get away with using Neurontin, I highly recommend it. I use Neurontin for like six or seven years. I use it for a really long time until I just gained a tolerance to it where I couldn't take it anymore. Now I use Lyrica. A generic's gonna come out um, in the middle of 2019 and it'll be less expensive, but this one I found is, is the best. Um, the next thing I take is something called Tizanidine. Tizanidine is Xanaflex. A lot of people with spinal cord injuries get prescribed Baclofen. Baclofen is an antispasmatic with the muscle relaxer properties. I don't have spasms. My level of injury doesn't have spasms. This 
I really like. It just like chills and mellows and relaxes my muscles. I really only take like a half a pill before I go to bed sometimes. Like I don't like taking this for more of a couple days at a time. Um, I find myself getting really like lethargic and like sad and like boom, boom, boom. It's just not something that I, I really prefer to have in my system, but it works well. And I like to tag team it with, with these two. So I'll take, I'll take some of these and I'll take some of these at the same time. So these are the medications that I take and the supplements that I take. And these are what work for me. You gotta find what works for you. All right, so this is the type of organization system that I use. I take medications three times a day. So this is purple, this is my AM. I have my PM, which is blue. Now, this one goes by my bedside, so it really doesn't matter what color it is, but if you keep these all together, get yourself like a green one or something. Now, I'm usually around the house to take my medications. Um, if for whatever reason I'm not gonna be around or near to take my medications, I'll get like an empty little prescription bottle or like a Ziploc bag or something that I can carry in my bag, which um, we do have a video uh, called What's in My Bag or something along those lines. And you can go and look and kind of see what I have organized in my bag. This is just really the, the system that I have. It works out well once a week. I just load it up with, with all my, my stuff and I don't have to think about it. It's just ready to go, just like that. Oh, hello there. Welcome to my bag. <laughs> Recently, in the wintertime, the baths have been like the best thing ever. What I do is I get the run water running hot. Not hot enough to burn your skin, obviously, but a little bit hotter than a shower. And that, what that does is I get all the blood flow to rush to your legs. It's really calming, it's really relaxing. You can add lavender in, you can add Epsom salt in. You can really just chill, just keep your legs all submerged underneath the water. Um, the only recommendation I have is make sure when you're sitting, you're sitting on uh, something soft, like a cushion or a towel. I fold up a towel sometimes and stick it underneath me because I don't need to be getting a skin sore sitting on my butt. This has been like an absolute lifesaver. I've got a lot of metal in my legs and the metal gets cold and I don't have a lot of muscle in my legs. The muscle can't heat up the bone which can't heat up the metal. So I have this like popsicle, like refrigerator, like cold as ice ankles that really hurt. They cause me a lot of pain. It's a little obnoxious. It takes, you know, 20, 30 minutes, but it's way better than being hooked on narcotics. Be sure to check out my email list. There's a whole lot of precautionary tales about my experience with taking narcotics. And there's, there's a reason why I choose to do these methods versus just taking a pill. Because I found from my experience, there's way more consequences to taking a, a, an opiate based pill than there is to find other methods of pain management. Meditation. Meditation can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. To me, it just means clearing my mind and helping me focus on good and positive things in my life. Now you might be asking yourself, what does that have to do with pain? Well, to me, it helps me gain perspective and relativity because I get to remember times when there was worse pain and I made it through. It, it was less pain and it got better. It helps me remember that things are temporary and it also keeps me grateful. You know, gratitude is one of those things that it's, it's you can't be mad and fearful and angry and upset if you're grateful. Now, I know for me personally, pain upsets me a lot. It frustrates me, it annoys me because it gets in my way constantly. But if I can close my eyes and meditate and think about all the positives in my life, all the good things in my life, and be grateful for what I have going for me well, I tend to forget about the pain that I'm experiencing. Like even right now, as I'm talking to you and I'm thinking about all of the good and positive things right now, some of the pain that I'm experiencing, I don't even realize because my mind is somewhere else. It's not focused on, oh, this really sucks. I really hate this. This is painful. This is never gonna go away. This is miserable. Why me? This isn't fair. And it changes it into something good. The next thing I'm gonna tell you about is what I call distraction therapy. It's like a way that you can help your pain reduce by distracting yourself in a positive way. The most important, but definitely the most challenging to do when you're in pain, socialize. Go hang out with friends, go hang out with family, get out of your house, go somewhere and do something. I've found 
that this can be really empowering. It gives you the choice whether your pain is going to affect you or not. So I call this chosen misery. No matter what I do, whether I lay in bed or if I go out and hang out with people, I am probably going to be miserable. Or if I go run an errand or if I go to the gym, I'm probably gonna be in a state of suck. But if I move, and if I see people and I talk to people and I get distracted and I complete tasks, it's empowering, it's a positive thing. Instead of feeling like your pain controls you, you get to control the pain. Instead of feeling powerless, you feel powerful to kind of give my middle finger to my pain and say, no, you know what, today you're not gonna control me. Yeah, this sucks, yeah, this hurts, yeah, I'm in pain, but laying in bed doing nothing is just gonna make it worse there is a possibility, a potential that something could happen where I am not focused on my pain anymore. I am focused on the positive, just like I mentioned previously with my meditation and with gratitude. Anyone can apply to their life if you're having a bad day, but specifically for wheelchair users, when we're in pain, we don't wanna do anything. It's more of a mental thing, but when you distract yourself in a positive, healthy way, as opposed to an escapism form of distraction, that's not as positive as human interaction. When I was first getting my life back together, uh, one of the things that I wanted to learn how to do again was exercise. But I was too embarrassed and too ashamed to go to any kind of public gym. Now, what I would do is I would come to, to this gym right here. This is a gym in my building really early in the morning or super late at night so I could learn how to figure out how to do lifts again. Now, I didn't realize how important exercise was for pain management until I started regularly exercising and I noticed how much my pain was reduced. We got increased blood flow, we've got a higher metabolism, endorphins and all these positive things that are good for you. Um, not only that, I was able to create other levels of soreness and pain in my body that wasn't where I normally felt it. So if I had a sore arm or a sore chest or sore abs, those were the first responders of my pain detectors versus the dull and the achy bones and joints and all these real negative things that I associated with, with pain that I would have to take medication for, that I would get stuck in bed for. So not only did it reduce my pain, but it changed my body and I felt good and better about myself. And it was all just a great thing because when I saw my body changing, I wanted to eat right. I also learned that there's these really cool lifestyles of ways of living and eating that have pain management properties. They're like anti-inflammatory diets and other special things that you can learn. So exercise has been like a huge thing for me. You have to learn how to do things differently. You have to find your own style and your own way of hitting the right muscles. And sometimes what that can do is cause a lot of soreness, a lot of stiffness simply for being active. I started working out and eating better and I got stronger. I got stronger, feeling a lot better about myself. My pain was reduced, it changed a little bit, but I started picking up injuries. Not really injuries um, that were gonna stop me, but just little things like, oh, my elbow would hurt or my shoulder would hurt or my low back would hurt a little bit more. So what I did is I found myself a sports massage therapist. Not a fluffy in a spa with lavender towels and you know soft music. This massage therapist was there to do work. Just really rub out the muscles and kind of drain and, and detoxify the soreness. I currently get a massage every week or every other week. Currently it's about every other week. That has really been most recently the game changer. It pinpoints specific areas. Like I can go in there and lay on the table and say, the right side of my lower back, my right hamstring, my left shoulder, my left elbow, and my middle back. And he'll go, got it. And he goes in there and just digs around. And it hurts, but it hurts so good because for the next week or two, I have minimal pain. If this video has been a great help to you, and I really hope it has, please be sure to leave um, a comment down below. Hit me with a like. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. If you wanna know more of my story about um, my uh, issues and challenges with narcotic pain medication, sign up for my email list. Also, follow us on Facebook. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the comments down below.
Oh, you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> Eating too many popsicles. You know, the, the little plastic ones, you just rip them and they cut your mouth open. 